We have Jana Bazani here, the head volleyball coach for Eastern Kentucky University. Jana was my setter at San Diego State University, now moved on and she's a first year head coach. So Jana, from assistant to head coach, what's a good lesson you've learned in your first year? I think the biggest lesson I learned was trying to distance myself from being that person for the girls that they can come to at any point in time when they're struggling for anything and trying to get them to now see me at a different light because we didn't lose anybody. We returned to all of the girls that I was an assistant under. So I pretty much had the same team. And so trying to distance them, but I think for them to also see me as their head coach and learn that respect factor as well. Not that they didn't respect me as an assistant, but it was just a different relationship. And so they did a very good job about it. And we graduated six seniors. So that was a big majority of the class. So next year we'll be having eight incomings. And so that's going to be a whole new type of vibe and my whole new team pretty much. So I'm kind of looking forward to that aspect as well. Now, as a player, you were a setter and you played with a chip on your shoulder to prove to everyone that you belong and you became the setter of the conference two years in a row. How did it feel to be under recruited and then come in and just fight to then eventually win a Mountain West Conference Championship? I think my experience as a player really shaped me into who I wanted to be as a coach as well now. And, you know, I committed young to a different school my sophomore year in my recruiting process and then I decommitted and then you guys found me. You know, you guys told me right off the bat when I came in, you got to play right away. Our starting setter transferred. You know, you told me just just do what you know. I'm not going to teach you anything new. Just I, we need you to play. Step up. It was a little intimidating. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I made it work. And then come year two, you know, you're teaching me all these new different techniques and you're bringing in other setters and definitely a lot of pressure. But I think the biggest thing for me and was challenging, but to really dig into what you guys wanted me to do and yeah, put that chip on my shoulder. And that's what I wanted and to take that team to the next level. And, you know, we did it for two years in a row. We were at the top of the conference and it was a good feeling. And then that's how I wanted to get into coaching is because you trained me to be the best setter, but also a good person. And it's not just about volleyball. So wanting to take that into my career and being able to teach setters different things and even just anybody in any position. So my experience was a good one. And that's why I'm here now coaching. <laughs> And Jana, you were a great leader. Everybody loved playing with you. And that's what kept you on the court, no matter what other setters were around. Everybody loved playing with you. What are some leadership traits that you either had or learned then that you now instill in your players? I think for me, when I, you know, when I was playing, I was very consistent and I think I was very stable. I wasn't a very energetic, loud, enthusiastic setter, but I also wasn't one that was, you could see on my face that I was just defeated or I was struggling. So I try to keep that consistency vibe, like never let them see a sweat kind of thing. But also when I needed to, I, you know, I could turn it on if I had to. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, I'm teaching the girls right now is trying to get people to step up. I think nowadays mental health gets involved with girls because they're lacking that confidence factor. And so when you have your team, you're trying to find those leaders just those natural leaders that are going to step up vocally and on the court, but how can you get kids that are struggling out of their funk? And just trying to instill in my players right now that it's okay to make mistakes. Volleyball is a game of error, so you got to bounce back from that, and that's going to help with leadership. And I tell them every single year, I don't care if you're a freshman, sophomore, or junior, senior, someone's got to lead the team. And if it's a freshman, awesome. You know, they have that fearful aspect of really coming out of their comfort zone and trying to lead. So just trying to set that tone in my coaching style and trying to let them know it's okay to make mistakes. Don't be fearful. You know, you're going to get yourself out of it, but being a good teammate and being on and off the court is going to be huge for us. And as an assistant coach at EKU, and now you're the head coach, you were a really good Good recruiter to get mm -hmm. you even that head coaching job. What are some things you look for in recruits? You know, in our conference, we're a mid-major school, but you kind of have to look at what you're dealing with and who you're competing with in your conference and kind of what areas you need. And I love looking for those underdog kids that are, we're kind of like me getting overlooked by schools, undersized kids that, but they're athletic, they're smart, they just want to be the best. And then outside, it's just how they respond to their coaches, you know, when they're making a mistake, are they just blowing their coaches off and not taking criticism? And even with their parents after the game's over? How are they interacting with their parents? Are they being rude to them? Are they being coddled by them? Or if they're just showing them respect? And so those are the types of things we look for in kids because we're very family-based and we want to bring in kids that we know that are going to be a good family, but also can do it on their own. So I love those underdogs. I love the undersized girls. We got a 5'8 middle right now and she's balling and I love it. So it's just trying to get those types of kids that want to be great and do all the extra work to be great. And speaking of family, did I hear that somebody's pregnant. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I am. So you get married at EKU and now mm -hmm. you're a head coach about to have a baby. How does that feel taking on like double responsibility? I not know. Not to scare you, John. I'm not to scare you. <laughs> I'm really glad I got my first year under my belt with not being pregnant just because the unknowns of pregnancy and then with trying to find your groove as a head coach. And I think now I kind of got the gauge of it, but it's definitely exciting because it's an exciting journey to go on it as being my first year and now going into my second and then also being my first baby. So I've got a good husband who supports me and everything. And I've got a good team, my assistants, my athletic department and, and my girls. I got 14 babysitters now. I'll be selfish in that aspect for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I know about you being your former coach, whatever you put your mind to, you're going to be successful. You were like that as a player. You were a dominant assistant coach for your AD to give you that head coaching role. And then you're just going to take your EKU team by storm. So Jonna, we're cheering for you as always. Keep it up. Thank you. I'm excited.